morning. My name's uh, Brian. I'm, uh, uh, as Teddy said, a graduate student at the University of Washington and part of a new team that uh, was established under the direction of uh, Drs. Bernard Borman and Mark Miller, uh, the Washington Rural Ecosystem Sustainability Team. Uh, we established a new project looking into rural ecosystem health that we've just started this year. So this will be a relatively short presentation presenting some of our framework. Uh, hopefully in a few years we'll be coming back with some more data and results for you. The long-standing forest debate between uh, public forest lands, timber economy uh, versus uh, um, protection for public lands hasn't produced many winners. And a history of highly litigious, uh, winner-take-all scenarios has divided stakeholders, devastated communities, and separated rural residents from the processes that dictate the management strategies from the lands surrounding them. Traditional economic studies have often failed to, uh, to capture the subtleties of uh, social relationships and community structure that are affected by management processes and the economies of forest industries. Our research uh, starts with a simple uh, posit that community well-being and environmental well-being are intrinsically linked uh, and that the interactions and decisions made in one uh, will inherently affect the other. So, Quickly defining well-being, uh, simply, it's how are we doing, how is the community doing, how are we measuring our successes, and how are we planning for future successes. Um, we have three sort of essential posits. First is that human health, not just physical health, but the health of our communities, the health of our societies, our cultures, is intrinsically linked to the environmental health, the community uh, that we live in, as well as the areas where we recreate work. Um, rural communities are unique. They have unique challenges that are not easily addressed by existing precedent policies or laws, and they can't simply be cookie-cuttered based on policies or laws brought in from elsewhere. And place-based communities require place-based specific solutions. And ecosystem services that operate on a multitude of scales and benefit larger regions uh, so much of the practices that the people and the communities uh, living in them are allowed to undertake. So, sort of the baseline for a lot of this is sustainability and resilience. Those are kind of very uh, typical terms that we often talk about. We value resilience in the infrastructure of our communities, in the uh, development and management of our lands. But we also value resilience for the social fabric and the, uh, and the development of our communities. A shortcoming in resilience, though, is that it does not necessarily set a way forward for human growth. We kind of think under Maslow's hierarchy of human needs. It, resilience uh, is a great baseline to reach, but at a certain point, communities want to be able to develop further. It's not enough simply to exist. Communities need a direction to go, a way to develop, a way to nurture their, uh, their communities and uh, have a, a future that they can build uh, and self-determine. So for this reason, we look at moving away from the idea of resilience towards the idea of transformability, which is being so secure or stable in a community that you're able to plan and invest uh, safely. So not all of these are topics that we're necessarily covering in our research, but these are a number of domains in community well-being um, that have informed several of our key questions. Uh, the first and foremost is public land policies. Uh, how can they better fit rural community and ecosystem well-being? And there are a variety of, of projects that have been undertaken through ONRC and uh, University of Washington, uh, some of which will be talked about in presentations later today and some which are just getting off the ground. Um, how can job losses and out-migration, especially youth out-migration, be reversed in rural communities? Uh, the public, how can the public and sector encourage more productive investments in the community? One of the uh, greatest challenges in the last 30 years has been the litigious manner in which many land decisions are made. And uh, one of the great, thing, uh, great goals of the future, we feel, is to address more of these through policies and through collaboration um, and to reduce the amount of, uh, of litigation. So this is an example, this is our, our social ecosystem model. Um, this one in particular involves a, uh, 
breaks down the human component or the human element into both your local on-site community, those are the people that are living and residing in a rural community day in, day out, um, while also acknowledging the externalities that are brought in by outside uh, human populations. So in this specific framework here, tourists are the example that certainly is applicable, but it could also be the policies or the voting habits of greater Washington and how those affect how a region like Seattle affects the practices and the day-to-day -day lives of people on the peninsula. Social practice theory is a, a core component of our framework. It's especially being used by my colleague, uh, Chelsea Midget. The idea behind social practice theory is that any practice, uh, whether it be in this example here, it's uh, cycling, but forestry management, uh, restoration activities are a mixture of the meanings that we place uh, into those activities, the materials that we use or derive from those activities, whether they be uh, replanting or extractive resource use, uh, and the practices by which we accomplish those. By altering any one of those components, you can substantially alter a system. And uh, by Um, by adapting those practices over time, you can iteratively change your, uh, your social practices and ultimately the structure of the relationships inside the community. So I won't talk about this much at all. Um, there's, there's a presentation on ethnoforestry later, but this is one component and uh, one means by which our group, uh, and particularly Chelsea, has been looking at um, improving rural community well-being. So, our th third component, which is really just getting off the ground, we got a small amount of funding uh, for a project called Rural Voices. Uh, a great amount of social science research is done through uh, surveys, attempts to quantify. This effort is, is specifically qualitative research, uh, utilizing key informant and elite interviewing along with ethnographic and limited participant observation. The idea being uh, we're all familiar with type 1 and type 2 errors, failing to uh, accept a null hypothesis that's true or failing to reject a hypothesis that's false. But there's also a type 0 error, which is failing to ask the right questions or asking a dumb question. One of the uh, great challenges, or one of the great failings, perhaps, of academics is defining the question before they arrive on the scene. The uh, purpose of rural voices is to allow the interviewees to define the subject, to express their expertise, as they are the ones with the experience, uh, and from there, to the, then develop our actual posed research questions that are targeted at future policy development. So our two main takeaways are that the social sciences are an important component beyond economics for developing effective environmental policy uh, and generating uh, returns for rural communities. And that social engagement is an important component of all uh, management practices. Uh, the sort of prime example being our forest collaborative groups. And there's our contact information and I'll take any questions if we have them. <laughs>